Number two, that is bioavailability. What the heck does this actually mean? Well, it basically means how well the food can be absorbed and how well the nutrients work in the body. An example of this is found in so many foods that are made for cats. Cats are obligate carnivores. They can only digest meat and in a couple of cases, a little bit of plant matter if it's cooked. So I'm at the pet shop and I'm searching for a bag of dry food for my cat. That's cat with a K. So I turn over the bag and look at the analysis panel. That's the best place to start as I know my cat needs proteins. And wowzers, that bag of food over there says 22% and this one says 27%. Obviously I'm putting back the 22% bag that was listed. It's not as good, right, as the 27%. Yeah? Nah? So off I go and hunt down the ingredient list, which by the way, is in the smallest print and I'm old and I can't see I'm blind. The list says from most to least maize, dehydrated poultry, meat, hmm, rice, vegetable protein, isolate and wheat. So the animal protein is in this one is dehydrated poultry meat, which by the way, is the latest trick out there in labeling rules, substituting meal for meat. So meat meal. Okay. The other ingredients are all forms of plant-based proteins. My cat needs meat, not vegetables. My cat can't digest or extract nutrients very well from vegetables whatsoever. So how much of that 20% protein listed in the nutrient panel is actually bioavailable to her? How much can she digest and actually benefit from and how much is wasted? And that, guys, is the million-dollar question. And this is why you can't just trust the numbers on the back of the bag. You also need to check the ingredients as well. 